All right, so we're going to go over real quick. This shouldn't take any time at all. Um, modern domains of psychology. These are also known as subfields. Your EQ is distinguishing between the different domains. So in the subfields of psychology, those terms are also kind of interchangeable. All right, so um, subfields today really can be broken down into, and this is probably the big thing you need to recognize, uh, is they're either basic or applied. Any job in psychology today, anything that we talk about today, you need to recognize is it a basic or an applied field of psychology. Basic, think of it as very scientific, very academic. Um, it's researchers, it's the people in the labs, it's people are doing studies. They're trying to learn about us. They're trying to figure things out. They're not people sitting in there um, trying to help you solve your problems, right? Basic psychology is oftentimes the more um, kind of, it's where, how we learn new things, right? So they're investigating and researching uh, our behavior and our mental processes, right? Um, the mind and the body, right? Biopsychosocial, they're all different, coming at it from different angles, but um, basic is basically trying to increase our scientific knowledge where applied is taking the research that the basic researchers do um, and using it to tackle the problems in everyday life, right? And that can be anything from um, how to best organize an office space, how to best work with the students, how to work through a trauma that you have encountered, right? So basic does research, applied uses that research um, and applies it to people. Um, I would probably Maybe you don't have to recognize and memorize every one of these, but you should probably, when you see something, um, be able to think about it and recognize which one it goes into, right? Um, so it's not so much you need to memorize this list. I need you to be able to see these or any of them um, and be able to say that would be an applied or that would be a basic, or in some cases, it can kind of be both, right? Like in psychiatry, it could really be it's an applied, uh, but there are also many basic psychiatrists who are both doing research and applying what they're doing. So um, those subfields and base and how those work out, um, you see that like most of them, most psychologists today, most jobs are clinical. Um, so uh, people that are either counseling or uh, um, psychiatry, it's like a lot of jobs fall into that department. Um, biological is also a big part of it. Those are oftentimes PhDs or who are working at the university level, um, psychiatrists that are doing research for a living. Um, Industrial organizational is rapidly growing. A lot of businesses want that. Social, educational, developmental school, counseling, all kind of spread out. Other psychology is a mix of different things. Um, but these are all the 15 percent, no, no, no larger than 3 percent. So if you have great dreams of becoming like a sports psychologist, good luck. There aren't many jobs out there. But they exist. All right. A couple ones that I think you should know. One, psychiatry. A psychiatrist is different than a psychologist. The biggie is that a psych psychiatrist um, needs an MD degree, right? You got to know that. Um, so four years of residency afterwards, right? So like um, my wife is in her fourth year right now of her anesthesia program. Um, psychiatrist takes just as long, right? You're going to be about around 30 before you actually get to start practicing. So psychiatry is definitely like biological, it's cognitive, it's approaching at chemical imbalances and emotional disturbances and trying to deal with it from a biological and a medical level. And the big thing that they can do is they can prescribe drugs. Okay. So um, clinical psychologists, um, their biggie is that they aren't able to prescribe drugs, so they are not a psychiatrist. Uh, big difference there. Um, and what they are is they're, well, like I said, it was like 40% or so were clinical psychologists. Um, these are the largest group. They're involved in the diagnosis, and treatment, and they're the people that are, are most people think of when you think of psychologists. They're the people that are working through um, a number of different types of fields of clinical psychologists, uh, but they are um, um, easily the most common. Basically, know that they are an applied version of psychology and that they are diagnosing and treating psych disorders. Oftentimes, a clinical psychologist will then send you to a psychiatrist um, for medication if, they, if something that a clinical psychologist feels that they can't work through without medication. 
counseling psychologists, um, these oftentimes work with more moderate issues. That's the big difference between clinical and counseling. Counseling are going to be like um, a wedding or not a wedding, but yeah, like marriage counselors um, or uh, people that are going to work with like smaller um, issues that like you don't so much need medication for or you're not so much a threat to anyone, but you have just, just need like a therapist, right? So counseling psychologists deal with that, right? They use these forms of like psychotherapy. They use the more, most cutting or edge research um, in this to be able to apply those, whatever that might be, whether it's like cognitive behavior therapy or exposure therapy, something like that. Oftentimes, um, a counseling psychologist require a PhD, EdD, or psychology doctorate. Um, but they often, in, depending on what state you're in and depending on what type of practice you're using, um, like family and marital oftentimes may not need that level, but for more expensive or for a better counselor, you would expect them to have a PhD. School psychologists is a little different. We're going to talk about that and educational psychologists. A school psychologist um, is someone that needs a master's degree, but what a school psychologist is doing is um, they're working more with the children and the parents, especially around things like trauma, um, they're going to work a more with, they do a lot of testing, I guess. It's like, it's tough. There's not, there's a little, there's minutia between a school and education psychologists, uh, but school works more with, think of them as more those that work with individual students, right? A school psychologist is going to work more with individual students who need to be put into special programs. Um, they work with gifted and talented, but also special needs students, um, students who have undergone trauma. So think of it as more of an individual person, whereas the educational psychologists are going to be working with more like a larger scale teacher training, pedagogy, design of like everything that teachers are going to do. So it's more like how we learn instead of an individual student's needs. Okay. And then industrial organizational, this one's more and more common of late. I think this is the most rapidly growing of the psychology fields uh, because the business world continues to grow. Um, industrial organization um, oftentimes expects people to have more than just a bachelor's degree, but um, in a lot of businesses, they'll hire you on many times to just to be a normal business person. Um, but if you have this IO psychology background, that can also make up, be very helpful. And then larger businesses, Fortune 500 companies are going to have like a team of IO psychologists that are organizing the workplace. They're going to try to help people work together. They're like Silicon Valley places. They are masters of industrial organizational psychology, right? They're doing everything they can to make their workers happy and to make them productive. It's like, how can we maximize productivity and efficiency and, you know, contentedness and happiness of our workers? And experimental um, is a you know big category. Mostly, what they're doing is working in labs. Um, they can work in just about anything, right? This one should be pretty common. Oftentimes, what they're doing is they're at universities. Um, many of them are just people with a bachelor's or master's degree. Um, but if you really want this to be a career, most people will work up and get a doctorate, and um, will end up being professors teaching psychology. Social psychologists, um, there's different social situations. This is another basic form. Um, they're studying conformity, obedience, leadership, why people act the way that they do around certain groups, mob mentality, things like that. Developmental psychologists work with kids and uh, talks about how people or children develop over their lives um, and how we mature both physically as well as socially, um, as well as cognitively. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think this is the last one. Psychometric psychologists. This, uh, these are like your data specialists. Uh, psychometric psychologists are people that, um, like they're going to work for like college board, ACT, uh, SAT. They're the people that are trying to break down the statistics of psychology testing and, you know, big data, big, um, I think it's big testing would be the name of it, um, but like big school testing, right? Like AP tests, they're actually, they're running through that data and making sure or trying to make sure that those tests are as fair as possible. So these are as much statisticians are as they are psychologists, right? They are really making sure that the tests that are being run, that the surveys that are being used, the data that's being used is sound data. So big ideas of 1.2, basic and applied research. That's the biggie that you absolutely have to know. Basic and applied, 
basic, you know, is um, just like the, the, the um, researchers or investigators applied psychology are those that are going to be a lot more uh, uh, taking that basic and applying it. Right. So I know that sounds obvious, but they're taking the basic research and then using it on people. Right. They're making people's lives better in some way. Um, subfields, again, there's lots of them. You really need to recognize a couple. IO is the biggie that you that could pop up. Psychiatry, the fact that it needs a doctor. The rest of these you probably aren't going to see, but just recognize them more than anything. More than anything, like I said, I would know what they fall into, right? Psychiatry um, utilizes primarily bio biological psychology, but it also has cognitive aspects. So like what domain or perspective of psychology is each one of these using all right so be able to categorize so if i gave you like um industrial organization you could look at that and be like that is an applied psychology that falls into the uh, probably uh, social and humanistic um as well as some cognitive psychology as well right so be able to recognize those that's it for the day um that is all that we are going to do we um are going to uh, call it a day there so uh, thank you all very much. Hopefully this wasn't too long. Otherwise, I will see y'all when I see you.